Daisy, everyone's favorite princess from the Mario world that isn't Peach or Rosalina. She has been a staple character in the Mario pantheon for nearly 35 years, making her nearly as old as Mario himself. Admittedly, she rarely has the spotlight all to herself, often playing a supporting role as other Peach or love interest to other Mario. Despite that though, she's gained quite the cult following over the years. Heck, I was talking with my assistant Richard the other day and he said that Daisy was his favorite Mario character. And don't get me wrong, I like her too, but there's just one problem. Daisy isn't real. Richard, hit that intro. Hey, before getting into the video, I just wanted to apologize for not having a proper video up last week. I was away on vacation, so I didn't have time to make a full video, and apparently I also missed a direct that I would have loved to react to or something. But I am back and ready to go full steam ahead with weekly videos once again. Alright, now let's get back to the video. I guess I should clarify a bit, when I say that Daisy isn't real, I'm not trying to gaslight you and saying there is no orange clad counterpart to Peach or anything like that. No, no, no. I just mean that if you went through every single game that features Daisy, you'd find that not a single one of them is canon to the overarching Mario story. How do I know? because today I'm going through every single appearance of Daisy and proving that none of them are canon to the overarching Mario story. Feel like that was pretty obvious. But what even is canon? Well, according to my most trusted source of information, Wikipedia, a work can be considered canon if it is material accepted as being authentically produced by an author or an ascribed author. This is garbage. While that definition may work for the written word, video game franchises are a bit more complicated. There is never just one author, producers and franchise change all the time, and often there isn't a clear, consistent story. That last bit is especially true for Mario, whose games have never had a bigger plot than Guy Saves Girl from Turtle. However, it is clear at a glance that some of these games are more canon than others. It's pretty safe to say that Mario, Bowser, Waluigi, and Vector didn't get together for a game of curling in Vancouver. But in the absence of any official word from Nintendo as to which outings of the Scarlet Sicilian are canon and which ones aren't, I decided to take matters into my own hands. After doing extensive research and consulting you all in my community tab, I've come up with five simple rules to objectively, scientifically determine if a game is canon. If you're not sure if the game you're playing is canon or not, you must simply ask yourself, is it nasty? The first rule has to do with crossovers. Anytime you see characters from completely different universes or franchises interacting with one another with no real explanation as to how or why, chances are the game's not canon. Take NBA Street V3, where Mario and the gang can duke it out in a game of b-ball with Shaquille O'Neal. Safe to say, that one, uh, that one ain't too official. For that reason, our first rule is no shacks. A game cannot be considered canon if it has any outlandish cameos or crossovers. A is for authentic characters. People in the game should be acting in a way that is consistent with their other canon appearances. Sure, there is room for some degree of character development from game to game, but the core of the character should remain the same. As an example, Luigi is generally characterized by his cowardice and his love for his big brother. Basically, he's a little baby boy. But in the Super Smash Brothers series, he's an absolute baller and is one of the only characters capable of killing you with a taunt, the ultimate form of disrespect. Also, in Brawl, he can take his opponents to the negative zone. What the fuck is this? 
The third rule is similar themes. Now, this can be themes in terms of gameplay elements. Anything that features heavy platforming is a safe bet. Or story themes. If Mario is ever faced with any sort of moral conflict beyond step on turtle to save pretty lady, that's not my Mario. T is for timeline consistency. This one can be a bit tricky for Mario, which learned from Zelda and never tried to make any sort of official timeline, but there are a few telltale signs if a game violates this rule. Characters interacting with past versions of themselves, people coming back from the dead with no explanation, basically anything that might show up in a later season of a show on the CW. And the last rule is very important, and it's, yeah, I don't know. And it's here basically because I needed to finish the acronym. This is a bit of a catch-all category for anything that doesn't explicitly violate the previous four rules, there's just something off about it. If in the process of interrogating a game's canonicity, you find yourself making the mm, sound, chances are it violates this rule. And with these five simple rules, we should be able to easily determine if a game is canon or not. In order for a game to officially be accepted as a part of the Mario mythos, it needs to abide by all five of these rules. So without further ado, let's go through every single game that Daisy physically appears in and figure out which ones are canon and which ones aren't. I won't go through every single rule that each game breaks, but remember, just one broken rule means the whole game isn't canon. Also, there are a lot of spin-off series within the Mario umbrella, but to keep this video from getting too long, I'll just talk about those series as a whole instead of going through game by game. We begin with Daisy's debut in Super Mario Land on the Game Boy, where she plays the role of the damsel in distress. And already we hit a bit of a snag, because this one appears to follow our rules well enough. None of the first four rules are outright broken, but it's a hard, yeah, I don't know for this one. For starters, the only recurring characters that featured in previous games, or in fact, any other game moving forward, are Mario, the Piranha Plant, and of course, Daisy. Everyone else is similar to a classic Mario enemy, but not quite right. Almost like they were trying to avoid copyright infringement or something. There aren't Goombas, there are Goombos. There aren't Koopas, there are bombshell Koopas, and who could forget such classic Mario characters as Batadon, Gunyan, and Chicken. Combine that with the fact that this game was not developed by Miyamoto and Nintendo's EDA division, and it feels like this one is the equivalent of the author retweeting some fanfiction or something. If you disagree and insist on saying that this game is canon, then at best, Daisy is on the same level of canonicity as Bullet Biff, who is exactly like the classic Bullet Bill enemy, except his name is Biff. Daisy's second appearance is in the first of many, many sports games, NES Open Tournament Golf. What a name. First of all, I'm immediately dubious about any sports game, because though Mario is pretty spry, he's shown no aptitude or interest for any sort of sport in the main platformer game, so bear that in mind. Here, Daisy plays the role of caddy to Luigi. And let's be honest, there ain't no way in hell that Canon Luigi's got the riz to get a caddy like Daisy. This is a classic, authentic character's violation. After that, Daisy wouldn't feature in another game for nine years, until making her triumphant return in Mario Tennis. Though this isn't the first sports game on the list, it is the first one that has sworn enemies Mario and Bowser decide to put their differences aside and engage in a friendly game of tennis. Now, personally, I wouldn't want to play tennis against the guy that submerged me in boiling pits of magma half a dozen times already. And I'm pretty sure Bowser wouldn't either. Mario Party 3 is the first of the Mario Party games to feature Daisy as a playable character. Again, we have sworn enemies playing board games together, but more troubling here is the fact that Wario is implied to be capable of playing an entire round of Mario Party without killing Toad in a blind rage by the end. Ah! 
and that's not right. Next up is the Super Smash Brothers series, where Daisy originally featured as a simple color swap of Peach before graduating to a fully fledged fighter, who's basically still a color swap of Peach. And I mean, don't even have to explain this one, just look at all those shacks. Look at them, especially that guy. Mario Kart Double Dash is the first game with very clear timeline violations. In these games, you can have Mario race against a baby version of himself, but perhaps even more concerning, you can have Bowser race against Dry Bowser. Let that sink in. Imagine that one meme, but instead of looking over and seeing Angry Luigi, you just see your own skeleton driving a go-kart. Daisy also features in the game Yakumin DS, which I'll be honest, I tried to do some research. I have no idea what the hell this game is. In Mario Superstar Baseball, again, we have mortal enemies engaging in America's favorite pastime, but additionally, baby Mario is listed as a speed character. <laughs> no. Super Mario Strikers, look, Mario's played just about every single sport you can imagine, and I'm running out of ways to say, Bowser don't play ball. Mario Hoops 3-on-3 three three isn't the game that literally features Shaq, but it does have this cactus guy from Final Fantasy. And I know what you're saying. Is there a rule that says cactuses can't play ball? Yes. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, you can see my vector rant from earlier, but also Waluigi is listed as a skill character here. And if he's got skills, I've never seen them. Also, if he were so skilled, why couldn't he make it into a canon game? Because no, Waluigi isn't real either. Now I know I've been harping on about these sports games a lot, but this next one is literally called Mario Sports Mix. I, I, I. This next one is a bit of an obscure title, Fortune Street for the GameCube. And you know what? Coin-obsessed Mario and the gang engaging in the brutal and cutthroat game that is capitalism? You know what, this one, uh, this one actually checks out. Hey, hey, wait a second. Is that a blue piece of shit I see over there? Get back here. Daisy has made a few cameo appearances as a card in Mario and Luigi Paper Jam and as an alternate costume in Super Mario Maker, but she's not actually here. So even if the games were canon, Daisy's appearance wouldn't count. I could own a trading card with Daisy. I could be an Italian plumber cosplaying as Daisy. She's also a skin in Minecraft Wii U edition. If you need me to explain why F Daisy allegedly appears as a playable character in Super Mario Run, that one mobile game, but I actually question this one because fun fact, nobody actually played Mario Run, so there's no way for anyone to know that. And last but not least, we have the mobile game Dr. Mario World. Clearly, this game is set in an alternate world where every character you could imagine is a doctor. I suppose I could be convinced that all of these characters canonically went to medical school for 15 years to get their MD, but what really sets this game over the edge is that it's the first appearance of Dr. Baby Wario. No. 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 And there you have it. Of the 79 games that Daisy has appeared in, not a single one can be considered a canon. And that leaves only one logical conclusion. Within the official canonical world of Super Mario, Daisy isn't real. I'm sorry to uh, Richard, Richard, can you just give me like like two minutes? I'm in the middle of an episode. I no, I haven't seen the direct. Are you kidding? All right, so they're so they're making a new Mario game. I, yeah, yeah. I guess the art style is kind of cute, but 